All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Akakadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders, the great mills, never well, peace and blessing to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all. Back at it when it lets through the spirit of power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, this video is edifying. And I want to just go straight to the point. You know, I ain't even going to waste no time through the spirit, man. This is uh, WFI Orlando. Okay, Watchman for Israel Orlando. But the thing is, man, all right, you know, you, you, you uh, brothers, you some of y'all might be sincere. You know what I'm saying? And for the ones who are sincere, they're, the Lord is going to is going to deal with, man. You know what I'm saying? If they're of the elect. But for you other dudes out there who ain't right, you know, Yahweh Bashmash is using you to be marked, to be a stumbling block, so on and so forth. And this this is why this truth is so important to constantly be in the word and constantly be studying and rightfully dividing the word of truth, man, and knowing the breakdowns and knowing the ins and outs of the scriptures to the best of our abilities according to our portion. Because at the end of the day, man, the flock is depending on us. Okay? We are like spiritual parents to the flock. The flock being like spiritual babies, man. All right? And a baby can't necessarily defend itself. A baby is defenseless, so to speak. And, of course, you know, you know, we're defenseless, too. We're worms. But I'm saying in a sense of spiritually, you know, in a spiritual metaphorical way. So pretty much if you if 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 you put the baby in harm's way, you know, the baby can't defend itself then shame on you, man, all right? And and through the spirit, I want to say shame on you. Shame on you guys for teaching that the Shabbat is on the Saturday, man, all right? Now, I know the scriptures say, uh, you know, judge no man on the Sabbath days. I understand that. But point being, though, that doesn't mean that you keep in the correct Sabbath day. Of course, now, at the end of the day, we're... Rehearsing the righteous acts. So, you know, we're not going to be perfect on this side. And that's understood. So I don't want to, you know what I'm saying, crack the whip too hard in that sense. But still, man, all right? When you're teaching this truth, man, you better, you got to teach it correctly, man. And the Sabbath is not every Saturday, man. It's not every Saturday. The Sabbath is dictated by the new moon, Okay. So the Sabbath is whenever the new moon is appointed. All right? And so let's just go ahead and get right into it. To keep it holy, right? What is the Sabbath then? It's that one day that you don't do nothing but cherish the Lord, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, what day is it? <laughs> I don't know what day it is. I know it's not Sunday though. Okay, I'll praise. Keep reading. God. Verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor. I'm learning. Right, right. <laughs> Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Right. But the seventh day. But well, what day? But the seventh day. The Bible can make it plain. The seventh day of the week. What day is the seventh day? What's the seventh? Saturday. That's Saturday. Right. 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 That's Saturday. Is that talking about Friday at 12 a.m.? See, that's the problem. All right. The seventh day really is just referring to the seventh day. From which the new moon lands on, man. All right, they're going off. Okay, because if the if the Sabbath is every Saturday, that means every new moon lands on a Saturday, man. Okay. And that's not the case because the Sabbath is dictated by the new moon, whatsoever day it may land. All right, and that's what the moon was created for. Let's go to the precept, Genesis one. Let's get it real quick. Genesis 1 and 14. And the power said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. OK, so the lights are to tell the times, man, the signs, the seasons, the times, the days, the years. Right. And those lights, there's two. There's two. Uh. There is, you have the lights in the firmament in the heavens, and then you have the greater light and the lesser light. The greater light is the sun. The lesser light is the moon, right? And the sun tells the hours of the day, 
and the moon tells you the days, the months, the weeks, the years, so on and so forth, man. All right. It says, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And the powers made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also and the power set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And the power saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. That's right. Okay. So notice how the, 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 the days, which this is really a period of thousand, uh, 7,000 years in completion, but the days were being numbered way before the concept of Saturday even came into exist, right? Because Saturday really goes back to the Gregorian calendar. Let's get the information on that right there. Gregorian calendar says the Gregorian calendar is a solar dating system used by most of the world. It is named for Pope Gregory the 13th who issued the papal bull inter gravismus gravis gravisis must slack if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly in 1582 announcing calendar reforms for all Catholic Christendom. All right. So the Gregorian calendar is pretty much the calendar we use today in everyday life. All right. And that's the calendar where you have seven days out of the week, which is correct. There is seven days out of the week. That's correct, per se. But as far as labeling the days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that is technically off. All right. Because the, the, the term Saturday really goes back to Saturn day of Saturn and Saturn actually goes back to Satan man okay Saturn uh, Latin Saturni Dies okay which means what day of Saturn man and that's that's a Roman idol god all right and Saturn is also likened unto Satan man okay so that right there is just a little extra history on the on the day of Saturday and the origins of the day of Saturday man Okay, but the point being, man, that the Shabbat is not every Saturday. Some some Saturdays the, the Sabbath will be on Saturday. Some Saturdays the Sabbath will be on Friday, but as well some Saturdays the Sabbath will be on Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday. You know, it it, it alternates, man, because it's dictated by the new moon. This is Sirach Ecclesiastes forty three and six. It says he made the moon also to serve in her season. For a declaration of times and a sign of the world. All right. The moon. Okay. When you go into the etymology of the word moon. All right. The word moon means month. Okay. It says from the moon is the sign of feast. A light that decreaseth in her perfection. That's right. So light that decreases her perfection is talking about the moon phases, man. And notice how I said what? The moon is a sign of feast. Going back to Genesis 1 and 14. It, it shall be for signs, for days, years, wonders, so on and so forth, right? So the moon is a sign of feast. Well, what are the list of feasts according to the scriptures? Leviticus 23, 1, and the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Here's the first one on the top of the list. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. That's right. So notice how the Sabbath day was the first feast on the list in the chapter of Leviticus 23, which goes over the feast and the high holy days of Yahweh Shemel Shai, right? So that goes to show you what? That the Sabbath day is dictated by the, by the moon, in particular, the new moon, okay? Because the new moon is the beginning of a month. That's why in the book of Sirach, it says the month is called after her name. Sirach 43 and uh, 8. It says the month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changing. Talk about the moon faces. Being an instrument of the armies above, shining, shining in the firmament of heaven. Right. So that right there goes to show you that the month 
goes back to the, the word month goes back to the word uh, moon okay and the moon dictates the months okay and you'll know how far you are in a month depending on the lunar phases of the moon okay if you see a new moon there's pretty much no visible light um that is that means that that's the beginning of the month man so whatever day that new moon lands on that dictates the sabbath day seven days from that day is the sabbath day another seven days from that day is the sabbath day another seven days from that day is the sabbath day man all right and then once you have your completion of that month whatever the next day the new moon lands on guess what that's the new sabbath day okay let's go back to that let's 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 tap back into the feasts as well psalms 81 Verse 3 it says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. That's right. That's right, man. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, man. Okay? So, it says what? On our solemn feast day. Going to show you that the new moon helps dictate the feast days of Yahweh Bashmael Shai. Okay, so that's the point of that right there. That's another scripture backing up how the Sabbath is dictated by the new moon. Let's get another one. And this is all for edification's sake. This ain't necessarily to condemn you dudes, you know what I'm saying? Even though, you know, I'm sure this isn't the only thing that they might be teaching wrong. But nonetheless, this is to help edify, man help edify because that's what this is all about is about edification and you about some you know you brothers take heed to the to the, to the exhortation man and to the correction lord willing but if you don't then it's all the lord's will anyways psalms 104 and 19 it says he appointed the moon for seasons okay the sun knoweth his going down right read that again psalms 104 and 19 he appointed the moon for seasons the sun knoweth his going down. So the moon is set up, all right, as the seasons of Yahweh Shemal Shai that the Lord appointed. Okay? So a part of those seasons is the Shabbat, the Sabbath day. And we know it but via the lunar calendar. It's not a hard concept. You know, the, the, the day Saturday wasn't they didn't have a saturday in the wilderness man so how did they know which day of the week to keep the sabbath they had to go off the calendar that the most high created which is the moon and the sun all right psalms 89 and 27 it says also i will make him my first oh, is that what i wanted 37 Salakia. Oh. I guess I wrote down the wrong scripture. Hey, it happens. It happens. You know what I'm saying? Um. Let's see. Let's see. Let me read this. Psalms 89 and 37. It says, It shall be established forever as the moon, as a faithful witness in heaven, say la. Woo, that's right. So that's the that's just, that's the point. The moon has been established. It's a, it's a decree established by Yahweh Shemal Shai, man. Okay, and it's a faithful witness in heaven. Meaning what? That the moon is always going to do what it is programmed to do by Yahweh Shemal Shai. Even if it has to have. Uh, um, an eclipse or something like that the Lord ordained it so you see so pretty much the point being what that the moon is established forever and that also proves to you that the children of Israel are still in existence to this day like it says Jeremiah uh, 31 35 on down okay also Jeremiah 33 goes into that but the point being what that the Sabbath is, is something that's been appointed unto us to keep to all generations. Of course, we're in captivity, so we, you know, we keep the Sabbath to the best of our abilities. You know, we're, we're rehearsing the righteous acts. 
But still, you know, you got to call an ace an ace and a spade a spade. And even though the scriptures do say, judge no man according to Sabbath days. So, you know, if that's what you're persuaded in your mind to keep, then hey, you know, that's between you and Yahweh Shemashat per se. But for you to teach that that's what the Sabbath day is, then that's where you're going off at, man. All right. And I still wouldn't recommend you to keep the Sabbath day every Saturday. I would highly recommend you to keep the Sabbath day on the uh, appointed on the lunar calendar. OK, because that's the what that's the proper way to go. And we, at the end of the day, of course, yeah, we are rehearsing the righteous acts, but we're trying to do our best before you have a shine. We're trying to make sure that we're on point to the best of our abilities. But nonetheless, you know, everything is set up according to the Lord's plan in his fashion. You know, we be a part of those plans on the right hand side. Isaiah 66 and verse 23 it says, And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Right. So why is the new moon and the Sabbath uh, being brought up together in the same precept, man? Because the new moon is what dictates the Sabbath, man. I'm read it again. Isaiah 66 and 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath day, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. That's it. That's the point. That is the point right there, man. Uh, let's get another one. Salakio. Exodus 12. And two. Exodus 12 and 2. I started verse 1. Exodus 12 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. And that's talking about the month of Abib, which we are in the month of Abib now. You see? But how do we know that? Because it's all appointed by way of the lunar calendar, man. And guess what? That word month, when you go into the etymology of the word month, the word there is moon. Okay? Moon. Month. Chadash. Chadash. Okay, this is the new moon month, monthly, first day of the month, the lunar month. The new moon, by implication, a month, monthly, new moon. Exactly. So, Right there, the Hebrew word is chadash, man. Okay? And it's always been that way. You know, it's always been set up that way through the spirit of power of Yahweh Shemeshai since the foundation of the world. And our forefathers, they kept the Sabbath day in that type of fashion, according to the lunar calendar. This is Amos 8 and 5. Okay? This is talking about the wicked of our people. But nonetheless, this still this is for edification's sake. Amos 8 and 5, it says, saying... When will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? Right, because on the Sabbath day, you're not supposed to be buying or selling. Of course, like I said, we are in captivity. So, you know, if you got to do something on the Sabbath day, you know, try you, you try your best not to. But if you have to do something on the Sabbath day, you know, when duty calls, you got to handle your business. So, uh, I, you know, that's why we need mercy. And that's why, you know, we have grace in Yahweh Shemashai. You know, so we don't make our boast of the law per se, but still, we you know, we try our best to keep the law to the best of our ability. Okay. But nonetheless, it says, saying, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great and falsifying the balance by deceit. And that's what two thirds the wicked Jake would do, man. Jake, Jake would try to sit, uh, um, sell you less product for the same price you know <laughs> that's jake man okay and a lot of these major companies is doing that now to try to hide inflation because that's a part of biblical prophecy inflation famines death destruction this is all coming to babylon the great man okay and then matter of fact now that we're speaking about the moon guess what the sun and the moon are going to be darkened in the day of the lord's wrath man because the icbm nuclear missiles the clouds from the missiles are going to cover and black out the sky, man. All right? 
So these are the times that we're coming into, man. And we pray, Yahweh Shemashai, that the Lord protect us and have mercy upon us in these times, man. And the Lord, he's going to protect those that keep his ways, keep his commandments. Like it says in 2nd Ezra 16. And a part of keeping the commandments is keeping the Shabbat the right way, man. <laughs> now, of course, like I said, and I'll say it again, because I have to constantly, you know, say this because this is important to know. Of course, at the end of the day, you know, we're not subject to uh, the law right now. You know, but we still keep the law to the best of our ability. Just because we're under grace doesn't mean that we just completely disregard the proper ways of Yahweh Hashem El Shai and his law, such as the commandments, man. You know, we don't make our boast in the law, though. All right. And I want to get one last account, if the Lord allows. Bear with me. <clears throat> 